Well, Monsieur Lazar is adapted from, from what I understand, a solo performance piece for the stage. Uh, Monsieur Lazar is an Algerian uh, immigrant in Montreal who has a backstory that we discover, a sad, tragic one. He, and he becomes a teacher in a school uh, where the class has had a tragedy. Uh, these young kids have uh, f discovered that their beloved teacher has committed suicide. She's hung herself in the classroom. And we go through almost the school year with them, uh, with Monsieur Lazar interacting with them. And you created the kids in the classroom, the teachers that he interacts with, uh, the uh, there's two men in this heavily female environment. It's a uh, an amazing, amazing world, universe. Can you talk about expanding yeah. that to start? Well, you, you're looking at a play that's very touching. Uh, I was that was five years ago. I look at that play, and and it's one man on stage, and it's very delicate, and it's very poetic. And I'm touched by the character. I, I, I like his complexity, like and and I uh, I like the fact that he's he's fragile uh, and and he has so much humanity to him. And because I had been doing this race around the world, I was interested in, in immigration. You know, I was the immigrant when I was doing this this huge trip around the world. So I had been interested in, in, in telling the story from the point of view of an, of an immigrant. And there I had a complex and rich character. As a member of the audience, okay. you would have to imagine the other characters because he was alone on stage. He was speaking to someone and then he was listening, but we could hear nothing. And then he was speaking back or reacting to that. So I guess everyone listening to the play had to do his or her own film in, in, her, in their heads, and that's what I did. And I guess you would have to say that I scrapped it my first dr draft back then. And it made sense to me as also as a scriptwriter to adapt a one-man play because it gave me maneuvering space to invent my own stuff. Stuff that I, I you know, was inspired from my own childhood, but also I went back and did some research in classrooms and I, I went to, to sit in the back of the classrooms and just observe how the kid you know, uh, lived and, and, and dropped pencils and true things and spoke and, 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 and I wanted to make a film that you would have a sense that you would be with these people. The film is quite uneventful when you look at it. There's this big, you know, dramatic premise, but it's quite uneventful and it's, 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 it's just building up emotion slowly but surely. People sob. It's like a four, four hanky movie. I mean, really, you, I thought it was a comedy. Yes, uh, there are funny moments in it, but it truly is something that affects audiences. Was the play this emotional as well? I think it was more uh, poetic. Uh, I touch you, but in a more artistic kind of way. Um, I, I, I certainly didn't cry when I saw the play, but I was moved, and so a lot of people were. And my producers, which are longtime friends, were there with me that night. And at the end of the play, I turned to them and I said, we're doing this. And they said, sure, sure, we're doing what? <laughs> and I said, we're, we're making a film out of this. We're going to make a film out of this. And they just smiled and nodded politely, but they were, were so skeptical. And, and I, for me, it was clear. Everything was clear. I was going to make a film out of this. Well, one of the uh, things you also did was you went to Morocco to Algeria. Algeria. And also, when you did this, you cast uh, this wonderful actor who had been doing one-man stage shows in France, in France and had a fatwa against him. Like Monsieur Lazare, he had to leave his home country under a threat of death. That was yeah. uh, his name is Falar. Falar. He doesn't want to talk about it, and I, I understand. It's, he's like the character in the, in the movie. He doesn't want to talk too much about his past because I think it's it's something that's very painful for him. He had to flee his own country the 19, during the 1990s because of the civil war and because at that time, you know, you know, the radicals, the Islamists, were targeting. Uh, they were targeting artists, journalists, magistrates, uh, judges. Uh, and uh, so he flew, and what he does today is very, very different from what you see uh, on the, in the film. He is a stand-up comedian, not in the American sense, but he's, he writes his own stuff, he does monologues, they're very funny, very burlesque, very, very burlesque and candid, but with a sub-political text. 
and uh, I saw him on YouTube for the first time and I said, oh, that's very far from what I want, but I want to meet this guy because I, I like what he looks like and also because I knew that he had read the play uh, once, a public reading of the play uh, in France for a special event, so he knew the character. So we met in France, I did a little audition with him and, and that's where uh, I met him. And casting these remarkable children, I mean there's not uh, anything that's, it's so natural to see these kids there and especially the, the little boy and the girl who are at the center of the classroom activities. His favorite is the girl, the boy is the troubled one, they both have these climactic things at the end. Can you talk about how you found these child well, children? When you're casting children, sometimes you want to see as many children as possible, but I'm not like that. I don't want to see a thousand children. I, I want to see like 150 and take my time in the audition. Just not, I don't want to put them in front of the camera, do your lines and goodbye. I want to meet them. When you're casting also a child, you're also casting uh, his okay. parents. You, know? you want to make sure they're there for the right reasons. And uh, so it's, it's about taking time and it's about giving yourself the resources to accompany them in the process. Like when I start rehearsal, I, I, I work with my coach. She's a, an actress. She's good with kids. And she, we work together. We really work as a tandem. And I, she knows where I want to take the kids. So when I'm off on other tasks, she can continue working with the kids. They are never left alone. Just like in the school, you know. You, you, and, and, and on the set, thirdly, and which is a good thing for everybody, I think we try to set up a playful atmosphere so that the kids won't tire too easily. And they know it's fun, they know it's work, but in the morning they, they, they can't wait to be on the set. Now, what it, uh, that allows is that when, it comes, when the time comes to do dramatic stuff, they trust you. And so you don't have to push them and you don't have to tell them you have to cry here. If they, if if it happens, it happens, and they know that I won't be pushing them. So, does this mean they have um, so many hours that they can work? Are there child labor laws yeah, in Montreal? They are, but they're quite relaxed actually. The, 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 they you can't they can't be more than eight hours on the set, and they can't be working more than something like I think it's six hours, six hours and six hours and a half. So it gives us quite a a lot of time to, to work with them. In some countries it's not more than, than four hours but uh, I, get, I guess we're still exploiting children labor back home in Canada. And Good for me. <laughs> and you have a, a situation here where uh, people wonder exactly uh, what is the truth about Monsieur Lazar and you have a story. Is this the same as the play? The What you've in in the play, yes, it, it's quite, this is the part which is the same. What has changed is like the boy is not in the play and, and, and uh, this relationship that the boy had with the former uh, teacher. And, but Monsieur Lazare is pretty much intact and uh, you have to... Uh, there's a character here who I think eventually tells the truth to the immigration officer. But he lies at school actually. He says that he was a teacher and he was not. It was his wife who was the teacher. He was a civil servant. He was a servant, civil servant. So now in Canada, he's an accidental teacher. He, he, he instinctively knows that he can help these children grieving. And he needs to be surrounded by children because he lost his own family. And, and I like this, this contradictory character. And, but I didn't want to make the film about immigration, specifically about immigration. I wanted this immigration past to enrich his character. In the play, at, at the end, he gets kicked kicked off to the country. The end of the, the movie is a little different because I didn't want to make the film about the, the immigration system. Uh, so oh, I think it was important because it gave us some background to, to this character. But I think what happens in the school is what's important in this film. So you, you have a happy, sad ending. I think it's kind of a sweet and sour ending, yes.